In today's video, we're going to talk about automating deployments for Laravel projects using GitHub Actions whenever we push the latest changes to the main branch of our repository. For example, we have a local app that we are going to deploy to our production server. Let's keep this simple. I'm just going to add another info card here at the top. Okay, here's the third info card. We're going to deploy this change. And as you can see, this is a live example under a real domain name which is my own domain that I'm using for this example. Right now, of course, the other info card is not yet here. Here's the Git repository for that project. And as I mentioned, we are going to use GitHub Actions to automate the deployment process. Okay, let's commit the changes and push them to the main branch of the repository. Now, as soon as we push the changes to the main branch, the deployment process will immediately begin. As you can see, here's my latest commit. If I click on it, you can see the deployment process in real time as GitHub compiles and installs the dependencies of our application. After that, it will synchronize all the compiled assets to our production server. It will also run optimization commands as part of the deployment process. So essentially, we are giving GitHub access to our production server so it can synchronize the files to our server. After the deployment is complete, you can see this green check mark here beside the workflow name. I set up a DigitalOcean virtual private server for this example and use my own domain so you can see a real-world implementation of this. Now, let's go back to the live website I showed you earlier. When I refresh the page, we should see the third info card here. And sure enough, after refreshing the page, you can see the changes are reflected in our production environment without manually signing into our server and executing all those commands ourselves. If I log into my server via SSH, here's the root directory of the project, and here are all the files for that project. Typically, if you are deploying this kind of app to your server, you need to log into the server and execute all the commands in the terminal. Today, we are going to learn how to automate this process with the help of GitHub Actions. Okay, let's get started. In the Git repository of the project, where you want to automate the deployment process, go to the Actions tab. You'll see a lot of options based on the project you're working on. It even has a Laravel template you can use right away, along with vanilla PHP and other options. However, we are going to write our own deployment script, so we won't be using any of these templates. In the root of our project, we need to create a .github folder. And don't forget the dot as it is required. Okay, inside this folder, create another folder called workflows. In the workflows directory, this is where we'll create our deployment script. Let's name it deploy.yml as this will be a YAML file. So the first thing we need to do is give this workflow a name. Using the name key, let's assign a name to it. You can name your workflow however you like, but I strongly suggest picking something that is easy to identify. Next, we'll use the on key. Under the on key, we'll use the push key and then branches. Under the branches, we will specify the branch that needs to be monitored for changes. This configuration means that whenever someone pushes the latest changes to the main branch, this workflow will automatically run, just like in the preview I showed earlier. And by the way, don't forget the hyphen and space before the main branch, as they are required. After we have specified the branch to watch for changes, we need to instruct GitHub Actions about the jobs it should run. The jobs key acts like a map or a dictionary of jobs to run in the workflow. Each job is defined by a key, such as the deploy key, and has its own set of steps and configurations. Under the deploy key, we need to specify the operating system environment that GitHub needs to use with the runs on key. And I will use the latest version of Ubuntu here. So I'll set it to Ubuntu latest. This tells GitHub Actions what type of virtual machine or container should be provisioned to execute the steps of the job. Next, we need to define the steps. The steps key is used to outline a series of actions or commands that will be executed as part of the job. Each step within the step section represents a single task or action that is performed during the job's execution. Think of it like a series of step-by-step -step instructions for your typical deployment process that you usually perform manually. But this time, we are outsourcing that job to GitHub Actions to automate the process. Under the steps key, the first thing we need to do is to check out the code from the repository to GitHub Actions Runner. So let's name this step Checkout Code. To check out the code, we need to use the Actions Checkout action provided by GitHub. This GitHub action checks out your repository's code into the GitHub Actions Runner. 
making it available for the rest of the workflow steps. This action is essential for tasks like building, testing, or deploying code, as it provides access to the repository files during the workflow execution. The next step is to set up PHP itself, and this will use this action. This is a GitHub action that sets up a specified version of PHP on the GitHub Actions runner. Along with some optional extensions, PHP configurations, and tools like Composer. So Composer will also be included here. This action is commonly used in PHP projects to ensure the appropriate PHP environment is available for running tests, building applications, or performing other PHP-related tasks during the workflow. We also need to specify the PHP version we want to use. So I'm going to use the latest version, which is PHP 8.3 at the moment. So if your project requires an older version of PHP, you should specify the version your project needs to avoid potential issues. Next, since Composer will be included when we set up PHP in the previous step, we're going to install our project's Composer dependencies. We'll use the Composer install command with the following options. Optimize autoloader. This option is included in Laravel's Composer deployment process to improve performance by optimizing the autoloader. No dev. This option excludes packages listed under the required dev section of your composer.json file, installing only production dependencies. No progress. This disables the progress output during installation, making the process faster and less cluttered in continuous integration environments. No interaction. This runs the command without prompting for user input, which is useful for automated scripts like this one. Prefer dist. This option prefers downloading packages distribution, typically zip files, instead of cloning from version control, which speeds up the installation process. Next, we are also going to use Node.js. Again, we are going to use another GitHub action for setting up Node.js. And I'm going to use Node.js version 20 for this project. So if your project requires a specific version of Node.js, you should specify the proper version here. Next, after setting up Node.js, Let's install the npm dependencies of our project by running this command. Now, after installing our Composer and Node.js dependencies, we need to synchronize these files to our production or staging server. For this, we are going to use another GitHub action called Easing Teams SSH Deploy, version 2.1.5. This GitHub action allows us to transfer all the compiled files from the GitHub's runner to our server, which means we need to give GitHub access to our server. Then, we are going to specify our environment variables, which include the private key that we use to log into our server. The source is the location of the compiled assets, which usually refers to the root directory of your repository. The remote host is the IP address of your server. The remote user is the username you use to log in. And the target is the root location of your project on your production server, where GitHub will synchronize the files. As you can see, we have some secret variables like SSH private key, VPS host, and VPS user. I will show you how we can assign these variables to our repository in a minute. Next, after the file synchronization is complete, the final step of our deployment process is to run the necessary artisan or other commands for deployment. Again, we are going to use another GitHub action called appleboy ssh action, and we'll use version 0.1.6. Again, to do this, GitHub needs to have access to our server. So we will specify the host, username, and private key so GitHub can log into our server and run the commands. Next, let's specify the commands that we need to run. Under the script key, you'll see that I'm using the pipe symbol here in YAML. This allows you to include a block of text such as multiple commands under a single key. The first command is to navigate to the root of our project. This might differ on your end, so specify the correct path where your project is located. Then, I will include the migration command and use the force option, which is usually required when migrating your database in automated deployments since Laravel typically prompts you to configure migration in production mode. Since this is an automated deployment, we have no way to confirm that. So that's why we are using the force option. Finally, we are going to run the optimize command, which if you are using Laravel 11, already includes caching the config files, routes, events, etc. all in one command. Now, before we deploy this, let's not forget to include our secret variables in our Git repository. And don't worry about the red squiggly line here, this is just a local file, and VS Code thinks these values are missing. So back in our GitHub repo, 
Under Settings, then under the Secrets and Variables menu, select Actions. Let's add our repository secret variables here. First, let's add the private key. Here, you need to paste the value of the private key you used when logging into your server. If I navigate to the directory where I store my SSH keys, I have a couple of examples here. The SSH key I used to log in to my example project is this one. So to copy the contents of that file, I'm just going to run this command to put the contents of that file to my clipboard. You can also open the file in a text editor and manually copy it from there. Then, in the secrets text box, I'm going to paste the value of my private key here and hit the add button. Next, let's add the host, which is the IP address of your server. So if I go to my DigitalOcean account, here's the IP address of the server. And as I mentioned before, I'm using a real server and domain for this example. Copy the IP address and paste it here and save it. Lastly, enter the username of your server, which is in my case is just Cooper, which is the name of my dog. Okay, we have entered all our secret variables for these values. Now it's time to test this. Let's head over to the terminal and simply commit the changes and push them to the main branch. Actually, before we push that, let's make a small change to our project. So let's go to our local version of the project and I will add the fourth info card at the top just so we can see the changes reflect on our production version. So in the dashboard, I'm just going to add another one. Okay, here's the fourth info card and let's push this to the main branch. And by the way, here's the production version under a real domain where the fourth card is not yet present. So after I commit and push the changes to the main branch, let's go back to our repository. Under the Actions tab, you can see we have one workflow running. If I click that link and select this Deploy workflow, I actually expect this workflow to fail because I intentionally made an error in our deployment script just so you can see what happens when an error occurs. As you can see, all the steps we provided earlier are being run one after the other. And this part is going to fail. And yes, it fails. And the reason is that we are trying to build the NPM assets, but we didn't install the NPM dependencies first. So when GitHub Runner encounters an error like this, it will stop the process at the point where the error occurred, and our files will not be synchronized to our server. GitHub will even notify you via email if your deployment fails. So let's fix the issue. Go back to our deploy script. In this part, let's rename the step to build npm assets and add another step at the top to actually install the npm dependencies first before building. Just like you would normally do in your development environment, you need to install the dependencies first before you can build them for production. So adding this step will fix our issue. Let's commit our changes again and push them to the main branch. Go back to the actions page. This time I'm confident that it will work. As you can see, it's setting up everything. Now it is installing the NPM packages. Now it's building the assets. It worked. Now, as you can see, GitHub is synchronizing the production files to our server. Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, synchronization is complete. And now it's running our artisan commands. Okay, it worked. Now it's doing some cleanup jobs. Okay, after all of this, the deployment succeeds, which you can confirm when you see the green check mark beside the deploy workflow. Now let's check the production version of our app. As you can see, this is the live version. When I refresh the page, and there you go, the changes are reflected. I'll log into my server very quickly here. So instead of manually running all the deployment commands here, such as pulling the latest changes from the repository and executing all the optimization commands, all those tasks are now fully automated whenever someone pushes changes to the main branch.
Automatic deployment with GitHub Actions offers significant advantages over manual deployment for Laravel applications and other projects as well, not just for Laravel. It ensures consistency by automating the build, test, and deployment process, reducing the risk of human error. This continuous integration and deployment approach saves time, allowing developers to focus on writing code rather than managing deployments. Additionally, it provides real-time feedback and logs, making it easier to troubleshoot and ensure that each deployment is reliable and efficient. Okay guys, that's it. If you like this video or find it useful, please like the video or subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and see you next time.